What's up, guys? And as we all know by now, Xenomax goes above and beyond to try to rob what little enjoyment us PvP players have out of the Elder Scrolls Online. Completely reworking sets like Iron Blood, so instead of giving you a 30% damage mitigation, now it only gives you minor and major protection. Reworking sets and balancing just like Hrothgar and Dark Convergence, which at first did seem very oppressive, but in the long term was actually really, really funny to behold, and it actually cured the Xerb problem that we had because everyone didn't want to die to Dark Convergence. Alongside that, we had all the hybridization changes, which on paper looks very, very good for the game. But as time has transpired and as the year has progressed, every build looks the same. All the classes look the same. There's really no identity. There are like 10 sets in PvP that are absolute meta. And if you're not running them, you're fighting an uphill battle literally all the time. And they even went as far as to change the empowerment buff. It used to be it buffs your light and heavy attack damage by 40%. This is applicable to PvE as well as PvP. Well, now the buff reads it only applies an 80% increase to your light and heavy attacks to PvE or NPCs. This left a lot of heavy attack builds, especially in Battlegrounds, feeling just completely abandoned like a prom night dumpster baby. But what the devs don't count on are all the players in the PvP community. They're very, very smart guys. A lot of 200 IQ plays. So you may believe that the heavy attack builds are completely dead. Well, I'm about to show you one that is not only viable, but is way, way better than it ever was before. And not only can you one shot for one person, you can actually one shot the entire Zerg of people. So let's talk about it. Welcome back guys and do not forget to absolutely eviscerate the like and subscribe button, hit the notification icon so you're actually notified of my content and when I go live here on YouTube. So the clip and build I'm about to showcase to you guys was actually submitted to me on my top 5 battle submission form so if you guys haven't already and you want a chance for your top 5 PvP battles to feature it here on the channel, there is a link down in the description to where you can have your build feature or maybe even show up in the next top 5. Disclaimer, there are many drag knights harmed in the making of this video. If you are a one trick DK main, you may want to look away right now. So without further ado, I'm just gonna let the clip play out and then I'll explain everything at the end. Enjoy. And thank you so much Queen Kitty Kate for sending this to me so I can showcase this here on the channel. This was an exceptionally awesome build. I had a good time watching it and replaying it back over and over and watching everyone just get zapped to death. Imagine if those numbers actually crit, you could literally one shot a tank. I'll leave a link to the channel down below so please go support her and go subscribe. So let me kind of walk this back and explain what's going on. Maybe you're not familiar with heavy attack builds or you're new to you, so uh, uh, that's all good. So I'm gonna break it all down here for you. So the empowerment buff, as stated at the beginning of the video, it, you can no longer empower your light and heavy attacks to hit players, but you can still hit NPCs with it. For example, we have Molag Ball here, and not only can you hit NPCs with it, but it went from a 40% light and heavy attack buff all the way up to 80%, essentially doubling the damage output. So in order to do this, you will have to have a heavy attack build. Badass Kitten does have one in the description of her videos, which I'm going to feature here, but I think we can tweak it to make it do a little bit more damage. So let me just explain the premise of this. Uh, essentially, you can do this on literally any class. The Warden does have access to your Screaming Cliff Racer. Now, the reason the Screaming Cliff Racer is so important, when you set the target off balance, your light and heavy attacks are going to do way more damage. So she's staying out of the range, like the max range of the Cliff Racer. When you cast it, you're actually going to set your opponent off balance. So notice she does that right before she goes in. So right here, the target is now off balance. You can see by a status effect up here if you guys can see my cursor right and now she starts channeling her heavy attack lightning staff boom look at that a 37 9 7 9 proc and none of this crit imagine if any of this damage whatsoever crit on these opponents if you was a tank you would be instantly obliterated so the idea is to continuously channel your heavy attacks onto the boss here just so if anyone steps inside the AoE splash damage from this lightning staff, it's going to completely destroy you. 
And another thing to note is that she is using the Trifocus passive in the Destruction skill line that is quintessential in this 1VX. I'm calling this a 1VX. This is a really great clip. It's one of the best ones I've seen, actually. You know, and the good thing about this is that you don't even have to use the Warden. You can literally slap this on any class. Yes, off balance is really, really nice to have, but it's not necessary. You can still one shot most opponents by not having the off balance status effect. Again, Kate, thank you so much for the submission. It literally made my day, and hopefully, everyone watching this also got a kick out of it. Now, let's kind of hop into the build and kind of break it down a little bit so you know exactly what's going on. So the set she's actually running is Sergeant's Mail, Storm Masters, Malagda, I believe I'm saying it correctly, and also Oakensoul. So let's start with what Sergeant Mel does. So Sergeant Mel gives you health, it gives you recovery, it gives you weapon and spell damage, and then the five piece, when you deal damage with a heavy attack, you gain a stack of Sergeant's focus for five seconds, increasing the damage of your heavy attacks by 645. This effect can occur once every second, stacks up to four times. So at a times four multiplier, all your heavy attacks are gonna be dealing an additional 2,500 damage. Now this may not seem like a lot, but trust me, it stacks, and it stacks hard. So the next five piece she's running is Storm Master. So Storm Master is going to give you a line of crit. It's going to give you a line of crit, weapon sp spell damage, and then the five piece. When you deal critical damage with a fully charged heavy attack, your light and heavy attacks deal an additional 1542 damage for 20 seconds. This effect can occur every 10 seconds. So just like Sergeant's Mel, you can kind of see the synergy here. This set is pretty much a copy pasta of Sergeant's Mel, but it's just a medium armor. So some other alternative sets that you could run in place of Sergeant's Mail or even Storm Masters if you have access to them is Noble Duelist, Undaunted Unweaver, and Undaunted Infiltrator. They all pretty much do the exact same thing, but they each of them have their own niche set requirements. The next set she is running is Oaken Soul. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with what Oaken Soul does, it limits you to one bar, but it gives you most minor buffs in the game and it does give you amalgamation of major buffs. So a total list of all the buffs it provides is literally like a page long. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Just trust me when I say this is the easiest way to set it up. And the last piece she is wearing is actually a one piece monster item called Lady Magaida. It does give you around 1500 offensive penetration. You could use something like Scoria to compensate if you have that on hand. If you guys want a complete full breakdown of exactly what traits and stuff she is running, I have a snippet here of what she has in the description of the video. So feel free to copy pasta this or screenshot or you know, just do whatever. And the last thing I want to talk about is some of the passives that make this build tick, literally. So the first passive is the off balance status effect. Now I do have a snippet here up on the screen screen of the potential buffs that it does provide. Now I'm not sure if these numbers are correct today because this was a snippet from years ago but what I want to focus on is number one bonus damage dealt from heavy attacks on off balance targets by 50%. The next passive is the bread and butter of the build which is the tri focus passive. So the tri focus passive fully charged infernal heavy attacks still an additional 12% damage very cool who cares lightning staff heavy attack damage however damages nearby enemies 100% of the damage done okay which is why you're able to one shot everyone in an aoe around the boss so effectively and the last passive to really note is the battle spirit passive now keep in mind the battle spirit passive is imposed for players to do 50 percent less damage to other players but that passive does not apply when you're attacking bosses so when you take all of these passives the sets the class and throw it all together this is what you get an absolute decimation of the dragonites which is exactly what they need because dragonites need put in their place from time to time all right guys you made it to the end of the video if you like this video let me know down in the comments if you want me to feature your all's build here on the channel if you want me to do a build breakdown maybe you have a super niche super unique very very spicy build video you want me to feature here on the channel let me know in the discord or submit it to pv be top five let me know in the comments of what this exactly is i might feature it here on the channel one more thing to note before you guys peace out i am hosting a 10,000 crown dueling tournament on the pts this saturday the 18th i'm not sure exactly what time but we're shooting around between 2 p.m to 4 p.m eastern standard time i have a submission form down below if you want to participate in that there's absolutely no barriers to entry you just gotta show up and let me know in the discord that you're gonna participate and as always a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members the support you guys provide is absolutely amazing and i appreciate each and every single one of you thanks for watching till the end guys this has been horcrux and i'll catch you in the next one peace